Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to get a Siri on any non-iPhone 4S device. Now before I start, I just thought I'd give a little bit of insight into why I am um, recording this video. So, you probably may have heard before of a Cydia tweet called Spire, and Spire was created by Chipone, um, and it was designed to bring Siri from the iPhone 4S to um, non-iPhone 4S devices. And that has worked, but it does have a couple of issues, like the main one for me being um, that it takes up a lot of uh, memory or RAM. And that might be fine for devices like the iPad and the iPad 2 because they have more RAM, but on a device like the iPod Touch, it does have like a limitation, I guess, with memory or RAM. So, Spire used to make the entire system very choppy, very slow. You couldn't do anything when you had Spire installed. And I know I made a video on that, but I've realized now that Spire was, um, it just wasn't terribly good for, anyway, for an iPod Touch. So, um, I did a bit of research online and then I found out that um, S26 Tech of the Technetic um, team uh, he'd created his uh, version that brought Siri, um, which was based off Spire, except his version was called Spite. And I was really excited by that because it was designed really to re reduce the memory issues that um, Spire had. So you could still do everything on your iPod Touch as you could before and Spite wouldn't take up a terrible load of memory like Spire did. And... Um, you know, that definitely helped having a fourth generation iPod Touch and in terms of requests and such, it was also faster than Spire and I was happily using that until around uh, iOS 5.1 or the 5.1.1 um, Tether jailbreak came out and then I jailbroke and then I just hadn't bothered getting Spite until the Untether arrived and then when the Untether came out, um, you know, I went on and I discovered that he'd actually moved, uh, like he moved Spire, Spite, sorry, from the Technetic beta team to the Technetic VIP repo. And in order to be able to gain access to that, you have to pay like $5 or something. And I know it's only $5, but I just thought that probably wouldn't have been the best move. Like, I, I mean, I'm kind of new to jailbroking. Like, I've done it before, but I'd assumed that a lot of things were free. And I, I just thought, you know, considering that Spite had been released as a version of Spire, I thought it would have been free as well, just like Spire was. Um, but he'd moved it to the um, Technetic VIP repo. And then people were having issues with, like, you know, it tethered their devices again and such. So he'd updated it to Spite 3.0.1. But then he discovered that other people had been making their own versions of Spite and uh, releasing it for free on their own repos and that they'd added support for a 5.1.1 untether. Now, I don't see anything terribly wrong with them doing that considering Spite was free at first and when it was released as 3.0, it didn't actually support like the untether. So I, th I think they're fully justified in like releasing their own versions. But what he decided to do, I don't think he took the news quite well because he updated the he updated it such that if you um download it and it doesn't match match up with a list of um registered VIP UDIDs for Technetic, it instead downloads a separate uh, .deb or a separate zip file and it essentially bricks your device. Like last night uh, after you know getting the 5.1.1 untether. I thought, oh, I might as well try and get Spite again, so I looked for a free version, I downloaded it, and my iPod, which is stuck on the Apple logo. And so then I did a bit of a look online, and I just and I realized what had happened, and I just uh, didn't like what he'd done. I didn't think that was the right way to go about things. Like, I know he wanted to make money off it, I guess that's okay, and I still think that the people that had uploaded it to their own repos but modified it f to support the untether, I still think they're fully justified because it was released free and I believe it should have been kept free. And I honestly don't think that S26 uh, Tech went the went about the right way with um, you know bricking people's devices just because they wanted to get something which they thought was still free and 
that they thought would support the untether. So I don't think it was handled very nicely, but, um, you know, that's just, it's all in the past now because, you know, I found another port, I guess, that brings Siri to non-iPhone 4S devices, and I found it to be a lot faster than Spite anyway, um, and that's why I'm making this video. Sorry, it's a, an extremely long intro, um, but I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. So I'm sure my, by now, if you've been looking around, you guys have probably heard about a load of Siri ports. Uh, some of them are working, some of them aren't. But I've tried this one over the past day, and uh, it has been working very well for me. So um, this one is called Acid Siri. Now, it isn't spelt as it sounds. It's got a couple of punctuation and exclamation marks and such. But um, I've tested it here using my fourth generation iPod Touch, which um, like all, all the third generation and fourth generation iPod Touches have got less memory than I think the iPhone and the iPad. And um, this Siri port certainly does handle that very well. So what, you need, what you're going to need to do, you're going to need to open up Cydia and you have to um, add a repo to your sources. So we'll just wait for Cydia to open, to load. I'm just going to cancel that. Uh, yeah, go over to the Manage tab. Tap on sources, and you'll see here is this one here called uh, Basim Kasim. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I'll just bring my iPod up here. So you just type in HTTP colon slash slash and then hit uh, slash and then uh, add that. And then you just wait while it uh, gets all the packages and releases. And then uh, once it's done, all you do is you tap on that, and you can see here it's got a bunch of things like. Um, well, the iPhone native apps, so you can actually use that if you have an iPod to uh, an iPad to um, bring the native apps from the iPhone over, such as stocks and weather and such. But that's not the point of this video. Um, okay, so for iPhone and um, iPod Touch, you're going to want to get Acid Siri. And that, those are the Siri GUIs for the original iPad and iPad 2. So if you go here to Acid Siri, I'll just show you, as I said before, it isn't as it sounds. It's got punctuation, exclamation marks, brackets, and such. So um, this is how you get it, and if you haven't installed it, you'll see instead of modify, it'll say install. So um, then you install it, wait while it downloads. It will take, a, if you have a fast internet connection, it'll take around about a few minutes for it to install. So um, just give it a while. I think it has to download around 100, me 100 megabytes or so in order for it to work. And then as soon as it finishes installing, just hit the home button and turn off your iPod. So you just hold down the sleep button until you get that message to appear. Then you slide to power off and then wait until it turns off and then turn it back on. And then if you go here, go into your settings. All right. And then you scroll down here. You'll see it says Acid Siri. And then this is where you actually enter the proxy host. So, if you don't know, um, the way these um, Siri, the way these Siri ports work is by entering in a proxy host. You basically uh, have to find a website that will be willing to um, either send your request with one of their stored iPhone 4S keys to Apple in order to get a genuine like Siri like reply, I guess, or if or some servers um actually replicate that and they instead use what's called a Google API server so it'll still translate your voice but depending on what plugins the server supports and such um, it'll give you different replies and things like a lot of them have been able to recreate like things like reminders and adding calendar events and such just like the real Siri does because using a Google API server allows you to um, just forget having to get 4S keys to authenticate your Siri requests. So um, that's the real point of um, like those Google API servers. But regardless, I'll just show you what one I have here. So um, that's the proxy host that I use. That's the address you have to add in. I'll uh, leave an annotation with a link to the actual website where you can actually visit and see their server status and such. The proxy that I'm using is called the well, the server I'm using is called the Big Bad the Big Bad Bird Siri server, and uh, it's created by this. Um, I reckon he's a pretty cool guy. Whoever's uh, running it, um, and they 
they they they do have both um, actual Siri server and Google API server, but they don't exactly have a lot of um, 4S keys. But um, you know, I think it's just a matter of people donating them. And um, if you do have an iPhone 4S and you'd like to donate to the server, just leave a comment down below and I'll tell you how you can do that. Um, but you know, so use that server if you want. It's a uh, fairly fast. The Google API server's up a lot of the time. They've also got a Facebook page. I'll leave the description down in the link or leave it as an annotation here. So I'll definitely go check them out if you actually get this tweak. So you have to enter in that address there. You'll see it's I've got a colon 444. That's for their Google API server. But again, if you visit the link that I have down there, tap on um, how do you get your device connected to the server. It'll tell you everything there. So once you've entered in your proxy host, you go into uh, general then you go to Siri, and here you're going to want to turn Siri on, obviously. Uh, set your language, you've got the usual language settings there. And I am in Australia, but I don't like the way Siri speaks when you set it to Australia, so I've set it to United States. Still picks up my Australian accent just fine. So if I go into voice feedback, you know, it's just, it's just your usual Siri settings like you have on your iPod, um, in your iPhone. And then once you do that, what you're going to want to do is um, respring your device. So, um, like for example, I can't remember. See, I've got NC settings here. So I can just go there and respring my device there. But I won't need to since I've um, already got uh, Siri and it's working just fine. So now to prove to you guys that um, hopefully <laughs> it works, I'll just uh, send a couple of requests now. So just hold down the home button and chat with Siri. Hello. Greetings, Barad. What's the weather like? Please wait while I check that. This is the forecast for Wallsend, Australia. So as you guys can see, it is working as um Siri normally does, and uh, as I said before, this is powered by the uh, Big Bad Birds uh Siri proxy server. Um, I think currently they're having they're having a couple of issues with like regarding 4S keys and such. They don't have enough 4S keys to support their actual Siri server. But um, the guy that's developed it, he's put a lot of work into the Google API server. He's got a whole bunch of features there. You can check out more about it on the website. As I said before, I've left the description in the link below. Um, but definitely use it. If we want to get popularity for it. It's a great server. Trust me, you'll like it. So as you can see there, that is Siri working on um, a fourth generation iPod Touch. And I haven't shown it to you in this video, but you know, I've tried this out with games and all sorts of memory intensive apps. And then I open up um, uh, Acid Siri or just Siri. And it works with like no memory issues like Spire does. It doesn't completely lag up your iPod. You just saw there it was working. It does work faster than Spire and it does work faster than um, Spite. And it, it's just faster in general thanks to Acid Siri and because of the server that I'm using. So, um, yes, it's been a long video, but I hope that's uh, definitely helped you guys out there. I know a lot of people have been wanting to get Siri on their iOS devices. So, um, I hope this video definitely helps. This is all completely free, and you can, um, as I said before, you get Acid Siri from the custom repo in Cydia and um, set it up with your favorite proxy if you've paid for one or if you want to use a free one like the Big Bad Bird Siri proxy server. And um, I guess that's it for this video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. I certainly hoped making it. I, I certainly liked making it. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe.